Getting straight into the top five news stories of the day. Since the tragic murder of two NYPD police officers over the weekend, New York City can be described as a tale of two cities, a widening rift between those that support the police and those calling for change. But now the city's mayor is calling for a truce of sorts until the city can fully mourn the loss of the two officers. The mayor says the focus must be on the families. The two officers, Wen Jean Liu and Rafael Ramos, were ambushed Saturday afternoon by a man who vowed to kill cops. And speaking of that growing divide, a Milwaukee district attorney announced yesterday that a white police officer will not face criminal charges after killing a mentally ill black man back in April. The news prompted a U.S. attorney to announce a federal investigation into the incident. The officer who killed Dontre Hamilton was fired back in October. Hamilton's family has called for peaceful protests and to continue the fight to change what is happening in minority communities across the country. And the honeymoon may be over for the Cuba and the U.S. as Cuba is signaling that the extradition of U.S. fugitives back home is off the table. There's one in particular New Jersey's governor is pressing President Obama for. Joanne Chesimard, a.k.a. Asada Shakur, acquired political asylum in Cuba after escaping from a New Jersey prison where she was serving a sentence for killing a state trooper in the 70s. She was the first woman to ever be placed on the FBI's most wanted terror list. Clearly, more work needs to be done here. And for the better part of the day yesterday, North Korea plunged back into the dark ages, referring, of course, to a time before the Internet. Call it karma, call it something else. The U.S. State Department is not commenting on whether or not they had anything to do with North Korea's massive countrywide outage. The outage comes just a few days short after President Obama said we would respond to North Korea's hack on Sony Pictures. And speaking of the Sony hack and the movie that started it all, one congressman is offering to screen the interview at the Capitol. Representative Brad Sherman sent a letter to Sony Pictures offering to screen the movie at the Capitol in a show of solidarity with the film industry and against the bullying of North Korea. No response from Sony yet on the offer. You know, I have to say it's really uh, an awesome letter. Uh, he talks a lot about how, as Americans, we really have a responsibility to stand up to intimidation. We can't live in fear, and we need to support our right for freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. I know I've been back and forth on this issue a little bit, but now I am so pro that we need to air this movie. I just think it's... It's wrong to back down, and I love what he's doing there. Especially I, over a movie. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I totally agree. You know, more serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's a movie. I don't know, Let's... threat, an actual threat that we've made, but it's comedy. Yeah, I, it definitely needs to come out. We need to we need to play it now. It's, it's yeah, no I think more it's bullying just, from it's, these guys. Exactly, it's a, it's a lot of what it symbolizes. You know, we're not going to back down and just let these threats just, like, rule our lives. Right. We're, you know, we're I know, in the it, best it, country yeah. in the world. It's probably so. playing in Canal Street somewhere in New York. <laughs> yeah, right now. That's exactly where we get it.